Sir. So let's see if Longju can take this to three games today. I've got a worrying stat for you, though, because okay. Longju are now on the blue side. Correct. Usually that means that you can ban away pocket picks because the enemy team is forced to ban the meta champions to stop yep. there being a very strong first side pick. Let me tell you a worrying stat. With that win, the Rocks Tigers go to 8-3 on the blue side. And 19-3 and overall. Their record on red side is 11-0 and in Champions. They have not lost a game on red side. That's uh, pretty damning evidence right there. And you know what's one of the stats that works with that? Let's talk about top lane, because usually it's going to be Smab picking up the red side fifth pick. He's the guy you give the counter pick to. Kuro is usually on the Lulus of the world, on the wave player of the world. Yep. Smab, when he's on the blue side, he averages 3.4 CS difference at 10 over his opponent. So three extra CS. Not a big number. Yep. It's 13 on the red side because he gets the counter pick. And Smep just won MVP. They're undefeated on red side. Good luck, Longju, because all the stats are saying you're going to lose. Well, it's up to them to try to turn that around and make this work for them. You can see going over the bands briefly. Nidalee, of course, taking away from Peanut, as always. Callisto, who is just never going to see him play, seemingly. seemingly. Uh, Fan away as well as Corky. And Coco played quite well in that game, but they do not want to give that over to Rox. They ban it away. Gangplank still being banned. Kog'Maw and Lulu coming out. Nothing too surprising there. And this is going to be the top Nautilus pick first off here for Longju. And Smep still, you know, despite picking into a counter pick, it's very comfortable in that hobby. And look, it's it's going to be a, a farm lane. That's the reality of the lane. There is, again, we just saw support Nautilus come out. So outside chance that Pure will play that. But most likely going to be Nautilus top. The most picked top laner in the last week of competitive play around the world. And it's going to be Peanut this time. Okay. Peanut, next to score, were the only two players that convinced me of Kindred early in the season before she was globally banned for three weeks of champions. Didn't see a lot of her in the following week. But finally seeing her again, Kindred's definitely been losing more than she's winning. Yep. But this is a strong, invading jungler that can duel at level two. Here we go. It's going to be the reverse matchup. <laughs> yeah, you have least, to think. He's possibly coming out. As they flip through, might just go for the Braum again. Well, the Braum was a big win, yeah. so maybe stick with the Braum. That was quite good. Oh, God. Please, he's like the Elise, not the Rengar. Okay, so we do get the Elise coming in here. Not going to see the Rengar matchup. Poor Chaser. There's a world where Elise gets the drop on a Kindred and can kill her very early. Obviously, when Lamps Spike comes through, it's harder. We keep seeing Jin Hobbit. Someone's going to lock it in eventually. They're thinking about it. I think they're really giving some thought. It'll be a last pick, I think. If More than likely. It. You want to know that it's absolutely safe. I could see them late. leaving AD carry for last pick and then going for an Ash or a Jin. We'll wait and see. Looking for support in the mid lane. Or maybe it'll just be Sivir time again. It'll just be Sivir. I mean, Prey played it very well, built it properly. The wave clear is absolutely astounding. So it would be a very reliable pick. We see the Trundle coming in. And they're just going to go ahead and lock it out. So Trundle and Sivir for a bot lane. Now, worth noting that Trundle may flex to top. Could be. Could be Poppy support. We've only seen it once in Champions, so it hasn't been a staple. Again, it's been largely Poppy top around the world after Noxiac and Fnatic were de debuting Poppy support right at the start of the season. But Gorilla's definitely got a champion pool of all of them, so yeah. he can uh, potentially flex it there. The Sivir. It's been the big story. I'm surprised we've seen so little Sivir just because that one change, the ricochet critting, took her solo queue win rate up 7%. She yeah. went from 48% back to 55 That was her number when she was, you know, basically the queen of the meta. Yeah, and with that much. one change, it's given her so much power because you saw those minion waves, they die instantly. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly what she needed to succeed as an AD carry. And uh, Bray is making it work. Let's see if he's able to do that again. You can see Lucian Braum might be the fairly reliable bot lane on the side of Longju. You can easily proc the concussive blows and harass out oh. here. Oh, but it's actually going to be a Pantheon coming through in the end. Pantheon mid? This Could is... be Nautilus mid, I guess. Uh, we did see that yesterday. It's, a, it's entirely possible, but I feel like this is almost has to be the Pantheon mid. Does Kuro need to pick Victor here because he doesn't know the matchup? Victor was nerfed on this patch, but... This is a peculiar draft from Longju. Pantheon, whatever lane it is in, has massive, massive lane presence. Very low cooldown, very high damage. Spammable skill shot Q. So what does Kuro do? Does he just go? He needs wave clear. That's what he desperately needs. Malzahar, I've seen Fly play this in solo Q. Malzahar is kind of the champion that I've always thought was good, but was never played. Yeah. So it's probably not going to be Mal's. It needs something safe. It needs to be yeah. able to wave clear is what 
Rocks need for mid lane because Longju have definitely pulled a fast one. Well, here's the hover of the victor. It's going to be the lock in. So, yeah, despite the nerfs to Death Ray, they're just going to go ahead and revisit this victor. So, this has been, you know, one of the things that we were talking about since yesterday whether or not victor was going to come back into play. And here we go. Kuro he is going to bring this out. There were parts of my first season of casting champions where I would call this champion Kuro because victor is synonymous with Kuro. He's the one. Kuro is the one that brought him into the meta this season. Only three games on Victor, so been, you know, actually chilling out, not playing Victor. 32 KDA over three games, even higher than Crown's KDA on LeBlanc, who was speaking about so much in the previous series. Victor has had that big nerf. No longer at level seven with just the hex core upgrade. Can he clear the back line? Still gonna be very good at wave clearing if he has to maybe risk a bit more. He needed wave clear. It's Kuro. Victor's the right choice. Yeah. See how this interaction goes. On early on, there's a pretty big lack of magic damage from the side of Longju. The Elise, of course, is going to offer some, as well as the Nautilus, but not a whole lot when you're running that Lucian Pantheon I, I'm not. I'm not convinced by the Pantheon. They now have a melee top laner and a melee mid laner. Their turret taking ability is zero. Sure, they can pull off some ganks, but this is a team fight, a pick comp, but nothing else. There is no way for them to actually siege, so they're going to be pretty narrow team comp wise and I worry about how they're going to be able to play out this game barring the cheese factor of Pantheon mid. Yeah, it seems like Chaser is going to have to do a hell of a lot of work to help get his team ahead. And even so, we saw in the last game, didn't work out. We'll see if it does in this one. Game two, Longju versus Rock Tigers coming up in just a few seconds. All right, back on the river, game two, match point for Longju, who want to tie up this series and take us to game three. Rocks, after a bit of a shaky performance, looking to 2-0 as they did the last time these two, two teams fought. Longju have been known to pull off weird picks. We saw them in their last series pick Zed into Lissandra. That was a questionable one for Frozen. Now we see Pantheon mid as a blind pick. This isn't a counter pick to Fiora. That's a spot we've seen it. Huni was doing that yep. over in the EULCS last weekend. To great success, actually maxed Heartseeker Strike first. It was blowing people up. But in the mid lane, Pantheon has the highest base move speed in the game, but doesn't have a lot of range wave clear. Has to overextend to trade. Overextending against Peanut, good luck with that. And uh, it's a very risky pick, and Kuro, realized it's probably going to be Pantheon mid, maybe Nautilus. All he needs to do is wave clear and be safe. And Victor, pretty uninteractive when it comes to wave. He's going to stand back and throw out a wave. Maybe it'll kill all the back minions, maybe it won't. But he's not going to be in position to die, especially with cleanse. Yeah, this is going to be interesting for Coco. We'll see how he decides to play this one. I'm assuming, yeah, it's just going to be a lot of chip damage. But the second power shield comes through in time to block the spear shot. He seems more than happy to just go ahead and farm up these minions while he can. See, the one other thing about Pantheon is that he's a melee champion, so when he goes for these equal damage trades with the power transfer Q of Victor, he takes minion aggro, so he loses out incidentally on trades because of the minion damage, so very difficult for him to win trades. Kuro going to take pain, but with the Feast Mastery, with the Overshield, with a couple of potions, it's going to be an interesting war of attribution. Coco. Yep. Especially when Sakoro has all of his spells, if you can predict the stun from the Pantheon, you can very easily lock him into a gravity kill. You see a lot of aggression coming through from Rock Tigers as they pinch around this blue buff. That's going to be the exhaust on the chaser who has to flash away. Can they chase him down? It does not look like it. Now they turn their eyes onto Expression. Can he get out in time? Gorilla, of course, not taking that pillar, took the chomp, cannot lock him into the jungle. So both will be able to walk out of here. Overall, it's a flash down on Chaser and the exhaust down on Gorilla. There's some really weird pathing by Longju. They were playing to their weaker side instead of actually jungling around the bot side. Very greedy. They didn't start those camps. It took a long time to finish them, but thusly punished. Tried to basically pull a fast one and get extra camps when they had no business doing so. What ultimately punished. They did pick up their own blue buff, but honestly didn't deserve it given their jungle pathing. Yep. You see, we're just going to have to swap here. The Nautilus heads down to the bot lane. Meanwhile, Gorilla, Smith, and Ray have all been chilling up in that top side of the map for quite some time. We're going to work down that turret with relative ease as it hits about half HP at the moment. New wave coming in. They will be able to get this here. 
Chaser nice. doing a bit of counter jungling as well, taking away that blue buff. Again, finally now playing around as zero lane. You want to play on the side of the map where you have more mem. It's called vertical jungling. You see jungle follow. You own the bot side of this jungle because Runx Tigers initiated the lane swap. They went top, so the bot side jungle is yours. The top side jungle is the enemy's. There's a heavy penalty on this patch for red side lane swapping because, of course, now you lose dragon control. With the dragon buffs, you have to feel like the dragon for Rift Herald trade, which with the state of dragon in the previous patches was, you know, 50-50 of that. Now is pretty landslide in the advantage of the team controlling the bot side, so you'd never want to give up dragon control. Yep. And so far, Longju haven't been able to set anything up, of course, very early in the game. Yeah. Chaser does take away the scuttle crab down there, which denies that mark from Peanut. So that's good on him. We'll see if Peanut. He's going for the skirmisher saber here rather than the tracking knife that we've seen all too often from our junglers the last two days. Lane is actually in a really poor position for Kuro, no mana, so it's going to be denied. So yep. CS advantage building up for Pantheon. Quite significantly, 10 CS, 11 CS now, just four and a half minutes. Pretty good for Coco so far. Of course, Kuro not going to be able to farm nearly as effectively until he gets about level seven or eight, I believe. Well, I mean, it's, it's actually early levels. People kind of misunderstood Victor's wave clear pre-finishing his hex core upgrade. It's actually pretty poor. Yeah take out anything with any sort of reliability. And now the reliability of knowing exactly how much damage your backside of your death ray will do to the back line is different. I'm sure Kuro has practiced Victor. He's a pretty decent as champion. You know, waiting over the wall, the cocoon's not gonna land. He's gonna go ahead, jump in. Chaser comes in as well. Spencer to take up Gorilla is getting burned out, however. There's not much damage coming through from the Rock's Tigers. Flashes have to be popped. Smeb as well now jumping away. Pure coming forward, trying to get these concussive blows to go through. They do lock up Gorilla with the cocoon. But here comes Kuro coming down from the mid lane. The Riptide Slow comes through. Can they get Expression? They jump onto him. The Dredge Line comes through, but it's all too late. First Blood goes over to Peanut. Longju Greedy, they only have th three members now. They only had four, now three. Yeah, stuck under the tower. They have to play this quite perfectly. And they do. They take out Coco. Smap going in deep for the kill. And fantastic juggling here by Kuro. But he's got to back out of here. The teleport coming through. His Expression is already oh respawned. Flash over the wall for Kuro should keep him alive. And the rest of Rocks just have to hightail it out, get back to the safety of their towers. Peanut you know, gets grabbed up. Can they finish him off as he tries to leap away? The concussive blows come through. Is the damage there? Teleport However, in looks as well. like it might be Chaser finds the kill. But here comes a teleport from Smeb as he starts wrapping right back around. Chaser goes down. They get on to Pure. They should be able to finish him off. Can Prey live? He does for the time being. Expression. One more auto attack. Can he find it? Not he get cannot. It. He gets locked up in the gravity field and he goes down. And just like that, Rocks Tigers take a landslide lead in this game just six and a half minutes in. Just a, a, a complete catastrophe of shot calling for Longju. There was no way for Fury to ever respond to that situation. He was slowly pushing up top lane. They were always going to be outnumbered. Good and in the world's most elongated level two to level four fight, Rox always had the number advantage. They were always going to come out to some degree ahead. But Longju kept fighting and ended up losing four members over the course of this fight. Yeah, the roam down from Kuro just making Just watch the, the mini-map. There's nothing Lucian can do. He's calling frantically, I'm sure, Fury's saying, I can't get there. There's no way for me to be there. Have you ever seen an aggressive turret dive with the Victor W five minutes into the game? But here it is, a three-man stun traffic cone as well. Absolutely. It's ludicrous. I don't know how Smeb managed to juggle the turret aggro like he does. Rox Tigers are so damn good. Their calculations, whether it was blue trinkets to get Baron the last game, or just this whole fight, they conceptualize things before they unfold and then punish you. Yeah, that was beautifully played by Rox Tigers. I thought it was going to be disastrous as they went in for the dive, but the gravity field just so perfect from Kuro locking up all three members, just ensuring that their very low HP bars were not going to be touched any further. And just like that, Rox have a massive lead. Six and a half minutes in plus now. So Kuro has gone for an item that we're going to see more and more. Going for the Dark Seal, which of course builds into Magi's. More fighting time. Yep, you know, coming in, trying to just maintain that aggressive playstyle that he's so well known for, and he will be going for the Devourer as well. The Dark Seal isn't a complete mana's item like Magi's was before Dark Seal existed, just because it does actually give more value on potions. Because of that increased healing. So Kuro doesn't want to itemize into uh, a big sustained purchase like Nautilus, for example, has with the flask. Instead, he's now gone for a bit more effective healing from potions with the Dark Seal, but of course, it is an aggressive item as well, so yeah. 
not quite corrupting potion level of investment, but still, going to be some extra sustain, and hell, if he gets some stacks out of it, even better. Yeah, that'd be really nice to see if he goes ahead and builds it into the Soul Stealer. But first, Dragon does go down eight and a half minutes in. Rock's Tigers continuing this objective push toward victory. Hell up that 6% buff. Not going to do a whole lot, but it gets them one step closer to that tower damage buff that they really want from the Dragons. Absolutely. Then everyone's a turret taker, which is a good way to be when you have double AD. <laughs> and a Poppy. And a Poppy, absolutely. Poppy's poke in general. The one thing you learn about Poppy is perhaps the strongest thing about Poppy is you get Iceborne Gauntlet, pop your W, you're hella quick, and your first auto attack slows from range, and then you're in position for E. Q, R, all the other CC that comes through. The fact that you can acquire a target from range seems to be the reason that you can chase down better than almost any other melee champion. Yeah. Speaking Quite of strong. Poppy. Yeah, we can see her just roaming right back down. We'll get spotted out by the pig board, but especially being slowed from. by the traffic cone. He gets a dredge line, but he pushes him straight back. Exhaust comes through on the Bray Chaser. Just now arriving, Expression has to flash. Well, Coco is fighting with Kuro. Doesn't look like that engagement's going to be going on for much longer. As they do go ahead and back off, Coco getting out-traded by Kuro. Kuro, I believe, dropped the ult to interrupt channel. Now, I don't know if interrupting channel instantly refunds. I know that Pantheon can cancel his own channel. I don't know what happens when an enemy interrupts the channel, but dropping the ult from range, given the fact that it is that instant ability cancel, it's not quite a silence, but effectively like that when it comes to a channel. He interrupted the channel, as far as I can tell. Just seen that way. Coco now, even in CS, with Kuro just about. And Rox just continuing to make moves here, going for the Rift Herald. We'll be able to pick this one up. Chaser coming around the sidelines. They go forward on the Smeb. Has that shield up so they can't dash into him any further. He takes a lot of damage from that calling. Who's going to get the Rift Herald? Nobody. And they're just going to leave it. I think the enemy can pick it up. Uh, I actually do not know. That's a good question. Fair question. Isn't Again, I prefer to think that nobody wants it because the red oh. buff sucks. Coco trying to get the blue buff. It's taken away by Chaser. Hmm. Not ideal. Yeah, so no more spear shot spam. When we mouse over to Crow, it'll be interesting to see if he has been maxing spear shot, which makes sense in a long lane. In a short lane, sorry. I'll take a strike. If you can get away with it, is more damage, yeah. but you usually can't get away with it. Hard to get the range of Corodo constantly spam that out and get that damage in, especially when he has a shield from Siphon Power. So I guess if you think it. about it though, like it does give him ability to push back. It does work on monsters with reduced effectiveness. So That's true. Maybe it is the Mac. Max. We'll have to keep track of that, the viewers. Girl just going right back in, says, I don't care, I want that pink ward. Two concussive sacks. Coming, coming in too. Come, yeah, TP coming in from Smab on the sidelines. Let's see what they can have done. Flash away by Pure will keep him safe. So Rock's not gonna be able to find anything quite just yet. Flash for TP though. Definitely a good trade from the side of Longju. Now teleports down for a long time. No objectives to fight over, so very low value teleport from the side of Rock's Tigers. Yep. Just have to see if Expression can make anything happen with his own before Smebs comes back off cooldown. See Rock's hovering around this dragon pit, maybe looking for some kind of pick, but Longju is not going to have it. Yeah, right. Smeb was just sticking around, saying, okay, waiting for Nautilus to start pushing up, then I'll go top lane, see if there's any. Chance of picking up a repeat engage. No such luck. Now Chaser, feeling a little bit confident. Going to go into the jungle of Pina. Spotted out by that Wolf Spirit, however. Rocks have to respect the teleport. Now now they all have to back away. Smeb is top lane. No teleport for four minutes. So Rocks have to be much more defensive than they played in the first ten minutes of this game. And the Dragon spawn in just about two minutes. I'm sure we'll see Rocks making a revisit over to that objective. But they're playing re defensive when they need to. Yeah. They are showing they have gears. One of the big queries about Peanut was, when his team's winning, he'll go and do counter jungling. But if you remember back to his Najin days last season, he would counter jungle all the time and randomly die when his team was losing. Yeah. The fact that he's able to listen to call, stay back, just back up his laners, when there's that big teleport advantage to Expression, is a good development to see in his development as a player. Absolutely. It's one of the big flaws that you often find with junglers, especially good ones, is they are sometimes just way too damn aggressive and they need to know when to back off. So good on Peanut. He 
listening to those calls and playing with the team. Elf City has a Devourer and wants to farm. That too, Smet though, getting engaged on at the top side, flashes away from that extra distance to get him onto the tower. Nice juke out. Will evade the cocoon, but he can't get away from the dredge line, taking a whole lot of damage, but here comes Peanut. It's a double pop up, and it looks like Expression and Chaser are just gonna back off. Yep, so get a flash, successful gank, regardless, from long shoot. Yep. Don't want to dive when there's a lamps or spite. So it was a couple of points into spear shot. Now is maxing the hard seeker strike for Coco. Four points hard seeker, three points into spear shot. Gorilla roaming up, trying to clear out some vision here. Maybe trying to create some kind of play around this mid lane, which has suffered a lot of damage onto that tier one tower. Big worry for Longju is very, very low on magic damage. Good base values for Elise and Nautilus, but not much more than that. That means that one of the champions that's the most decept deceptively tanking the game and Poppy can itemize purely for armor. Colleen gets burned out, Prey taken down to about half HP, but Gorilla arrives to keep him safe. And he should be pushed back up to near full HP after these Relic Shield charges are used. What will Pantheon offer long to is the question that will develop as we go further into this game. Now has fully maxed out Heartseeker Strike. Yeah, this long going for the blue steel, but Rox is here to back it up. He does here as well. Do they get it? It's actually going to be Chaser walking away with it. Coco comes in on the backside, doesn't find anybody with an initial damage. It's also now jumps on to Prey, but he gets popped by Kuro with a Siphon Power Enhanced Auto Attack. Fury goes down as well as Peanut is just chasing through. Chaser goes down, a double kill now for Peanut. Oh. Can they find Pure? The laser's not quite going to reach, but it's three kills coming through for Rox and a dragon off the backside. Rox was so much smarter at playing around Kindred Old than any other team we've seen. Instantly, Sivir backs into a corner. Looks like she's food for one of these frontline champions like Pantheon. Instead, fighting right next to the Lambs Respite, popping it early. Pantheon goes in, has to instantly flash away. They pick up the kills, and grouping your threats together with the Kindred Ultimate makes the utility there so much more valuable. Yeah, also just overshooting the Pantheon drop point a little bit as well. Didn't hit anybody with that initial damage. See, that's what you do, though. That's not actually a mistake. You want to occupy space with this ultimate to ensure no one can retreat that way. The Prey and Peanut fighting together. No one else committing with the Pantheon means that Coco basically dies for free. Prey able to open up space over a wall means that no one can finish him off. And then you pop ult, everyone runs, and there's nowhere for Longju to go. The only bad thing for Rox in that fight was that uh, Koro did not get the kill after flashing. But if that's the worst thing that happened, then it's not too bad. But yeah, people misunderstand Pantheon, so just like they do Twisted Fates. People, well, you don't see Pantheon too often. So. You, you do, and I'm not criticizing you for it, I'm just saying. What you want to do with Pantheon is ensure there's nowhere to retreat. If you're retreating, you're retreating into Heart Seeker Strike. Fair. You're not retreating into anything else. So the damage, always a secondary concern. A fair point, and I now feel very well age educated. Thank you, Professor Papa. Professor Papa on his Pantheon. I don't play a lot of Pantheon anymore. I enjoyed him in the jungle once upon a time. I used to like him in the top lane. It's good now against Fiora. Again, that's the secret counter pick that yeah. Honey showed in, in uh, the ULCS. NA. That's right, NA LCS. My apologies. <laughs> he has since changed sides. You can see though, Chaser going for a dive onto Smab. Interrupts the ultimate, drags him in. Just trying to mitigate that as much as possible with the shield. He's taking a hell of a lot of damage. Chaser goes in for the execute. Stuns him into the tower, but Expression is more than happy to take this up. The question is, can they finish off Smab? <laughs> he goes back in. Chaser repels up oh the boy. safety. Coco, though, getting engaged on. Does a lot of damage to three members of Rocks, but still falls in the end. Overall, a one for one across the map. But a one for one where Longshu will get an inner, an outer turret, and it's going to be an inner turret for Rox. So yeah. Inner mid lane turret means so much control over both Dragon and Baron Buff. A pretty damn good trade there if you are the Rox Tigers. I think they're going to be quite happy with that one. And then you see them rotating up. They might just go for another Rift Herald. I was going to say Baron, then I realized we're only 17 minutes in. Yeah. This has definitely been a more Rocks Tigers display. Yes, it has been. Starting off the game like themselves. Who are Caitlyn's Pantheon pick is what I want to know. Last, last boy, please. <laughs> it was Feel a blind pick Pantheon. Feel free to scold him after the game. A blind pick Pantheon. <laughs> mid. I mean, it could have been a Nautilus mid, I guess. But the top lane was uh, Poppy. You do not want to pick Pantheon into Poppy. Yeah. Curious, to say the least. A little bit. This mid lane is just sliding out of control here in favor of Koro. CS lead is growing pretty substantially now. Both towers down for Coco. 
Flash down as well. They can easily punish him if he pushes forward. You can see there's some focus from Longju down on the bot side of the map, but Chaser is spotted out by that ward. So rocks all the wiser, not gonna get caught out. A dragon spawn, two dragons now. We mentioned the two dragons with double range auto attack. This means good times when it comes to the split portion that's been going on for the majority of the game. I don't know why we're fighting over the Scuttle Crab, but okay. <laughs> it's a very important Scuttle Crab. Only the most important. Yep. Five stacks on the Dark Seal for Victor. I mean, it's a, it's a Scuttle Crab that'll be down before Dragon Spawn, so obviously you need it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Establishing vision. Establishing dominance. Our Rock Tigers have been doing that all season. <laughs> and all of this game. Not so much in the last one at the start, but definitely playing like we know them to. Coco maybe looking for the Grand Skyfall. Rocks don't have around. vision for it, but they are anticipating it. Yep, Smem likely. Oh, this is going to be the TP from the top side in the tri Go time. Smem has not been matching this TP yet. Girl already taking a lot of damage. Drops a gravity field, though. Trying to lock up Coco. Here comes Peanut from the top side. The tower goes down, so they're now free to go in. Coco gets stunned into the wall. That hex trigger shield not going to save his life. Prey takes him down. Chaser has to flash out. So it looks like he still may go down to this one. Peanut does finish him off. Expression on the run around the other side of this tier two top. Does Peanut have the damage? They're just going to turn right back on him. Lamster Spike comes through. He gets stunned up. Can his team protect him? The dredge line comes through. They do finish him off. It's Fury who gets that kill. He gets exhausted out. And Expression stunned into the wall. Has to flash over to safety. Don't think they can chase, but Kuro finishes off Fury all the same. And the two remaining members of Longju have to run back into the base. And with the wave right there, Rocks are just going to take a second tier two. And Rocks tried everything. Pantheon ult, instant Nautilus ult, Pantheon ult, achieved nothing, died instantly out of the ult. Zero, four, and zero, losing in CS. I don't know what to say, Achilles. The Zed pick, that was a head scratch. At this one, it's just awful. I think we say that it's going to be a 2 0 game. Grand Skyfall comes in, but it's so telegraphed. They see the teleport coming. One plus one equals two. Pantheon's ulting on top of you. They kite back, instantly focus down Coco. Of course, it's built damage. It's only got more Marmodius for any sort of tankiness. And then Sivir ultimate, everyone running in. If this is a no escape AD carry, if it's an Ash, you can kind of understand the Pantheon. Yep. But Siv is going to press ult. She has the spell shield for a stun. You're never going to get anything out of the Pantheon pick. Yeah, you know, a little greedy here. Does not the kill on Fury in the end, so I guess all the same, still quite good, but Rock Tiger is now coming in with an 8.2 thousand gold lead, just 21 minutes into this match, looking so strong and looking like they're going to very cleanly close out this match. Well, the problem now for Longshu is they don't scale. Pantheon doesn't scale into late game unless he's snowboard. Certainly not snowboard. He has a tank. They have a tanky frontline for Fury, but Fury is behind his opponent, and his opponent is a utility AD carry that is now going to do more damage and provide more utility than Lucian. So this is one of those scenarios where even without three dragons to zero, even without the massive gold lead, there's just nothing that can come from this long comp. Yeah, and something I actually just noticed that every single person on Rock Tigers is running Swifties this game. That helps too. Yeah, it's great for their position. We were nerfed on 6.4, but... You worried about the Grand Skyfall? Run away from it. We'll see if it helps with that. That too. Oh boy. The Longju head scratches are becoming a thing. OQ yeah. moment's gone, but Longju head scratches, you won. Yeah. Taking over. See though, Longju just struggling to figure out where they need to be. Nothing really for them to take. Smep speeding up, trying to get on to Coco, just slow him out, but not gonna be able to get that stun into the dead tower like he's certainly looking for. One of the most curious things about the 2016 season of League of Legends is that the best team in the world, the Rocks Tigers, they play reliable comps. They play press R comps, they play a lot of CC. They're always able to fight when they want to because they always have four, five initiators. And then we see teams like Spenu. Go Speaking of comps. initiation, especially nowhere to grab onto, gets locked up by that gravity field. Kuro will find his third kill of the game. And more than likely, Rox is going to find their third tier two tower in this top side of the map. Coco How many has games to back. have we seen two teams that can't start fights because they don't have the tools, and the Rox Tigers always have four people that have the tools? Why are the worst teams playing poke comps and the best teams playing reliable initiation comps? What is this world we live in? It's just so bizarre. It is. I cannot help but agree with you, Papa. See, that tower does go down, and Rox in a pretty advantageous position to maybe go straight for this Baron. 
Yeah, you can see that long as you certainly think that that is what's happening as they ping for help in the Baron's pit. But that's gonna be the go button press. Chaser, where are you gonna go? There's nothing to jump to. Comes straight back down in the middle of the team. He gets burned out. Kuro with another one. Coco has to flash into the Raptor pit, but he gets popped up by Smep. He's gonna get taken down, and it's gonna be Peanut taking away that kill. And just like that, no jungler, no mid laner. I think it's Baron time. When you have initiation, when you have speed ups, when you have aggressive wards, you decide when the fight starts, you decide when the fight ends. Only two kills, but almost certainly gonna be Baron with no Pantheon and no Elise. Longju can watch on. A lot's changed for Longju since they were beaten 2-0 by Rocks, but uh, scoreline certainly won. Yeah. I think if uh, if this was a solo queue game, this is the point that Longju starts calling for an open mid. Pretty damning. Yeah, seeming like one of those games. Actually, maybe that was about 10 minutes ago. Is there much difference between an open mid and a blind pick Pantheon? <laughs> That's a very good question. Probably not. Well, it doesn't seem like there is. I've got good news. Plenty of stacks on that match, guys. <laughs> yes, yes there are. So he was at 32 KDA before. Add on an extra 12, he's at 44 KDA now. Oh. On Victor this season. Nerfs came through, but no one told Kuro. He doesn't, it, Kuro heard you, he just doesn't care. Yeah, rough game to watch here for Longju. It's a really hype game one. It was, it was such a hype game one, and then it just became a complete stomp fest by way of Rock Tigers walking all over Longju's faces, as fortunate as it is. Fury getting jumped on here, has to pop up the calling. Fury doing what Brom does best and blocking his AD carry. He suffers half of his life at the same time. Rock just coming down, the go button is pressed by the Sivir, especially just getting absolutely melted. One last auto attack does finish him off. Ray finds that kill. Pantheon. Coco comes in and he just gets popped immediately. Ray finding the kill. Tower goes down. I think this is going to be the game. This is going to be the set. Rock Tigers just walking all over Longju. That time is not two. that long. It's only 25 minutes, but I don't know what Longju are going to do. The double melee, the Pantheon mid. What to say. Yeah, good lord. Fury almost dying in the mountain rocks. Trying to get some kills here if they can. Boomerang Blade almost takes down the Lucian, but Kuro says, you know what, I got a death ray. Pads his stats a little bit more. 5-0-9 to end this one out. The Nexus falls. Rocks Tigers still undefeated, going 2-0 over Longju. Such a crime that the Rocks Tigers are not at IM. Oh, I know. This team is the best in the world. There's no other way to put it. Longju beat SKT just a couple of weeks ago and then got crushed into the ground, specifically in game two. We're gonna have to be left to wonder about the now 0-6 and 0 Pantheon blind pick mid. Maybe we should let Sleeping Dogs lie. That one was a real questionable one. And Rox, they go for these reliable comps. Sivir coming back into the meta at the perfect time. This team loves to pick engage. And hell, you're gonna be in the great position for engage when you're all sped up. Yep. That was just about as questionable as the Nautilus mid, though that at least was not blind. At least that was a team that was getting crushed in the mid lanes. They picked a tank with wave clear. True, very true. There's a time and place for Nautilus mid. There's a time and place for Pantheon, but this is just not it. This was not it. So just very strong game from Rox, showing us how well they can perform when they're in form. And that's 12 and zero on the red side. Yep. First game was beginning of first game was merely a fluke. First set for Fury. Honestly, it was not about Fury. Fury didn't make any impact. Got a nice yeah. double kill at level one in game one, but nobody can hold their head in shame on the bot lane side of Long Fury and Pure played fine, but it was just beaten by a better team, especially once again.